Guess what? I'm still not getting paid by FX to do reviews for FX air guns. What's going on? I must be the only gun tuber that isn't. Anyway, this is the FX Impact Mark II. Now, many, many moons ago, I did the Impact, God, I don't even know when it was. So I think someone mentioned when I did that in the last FX video that I did, which was the Dreamline Bullpup a few videos ago. Go check that out. Um, yeah, the, the Impact Mark 1, as we call it, I was quite impressed with that, if I can remember. Um, I can't remember whether I had a 12-foot pound, 12 foot pound one now or is it an FAC one? I think it might have been an FAC one actually. 30 odd foot pounds probably. Oh, I don't know. Can't remember. You guys put me right in the comments. But this is a sub 12 foot pound Mark II FX Impact. And I've got to say I like it, but I have got my gripes. Okay, so I've always got my gripes because that's how I roll. For your information, it's a Hawk Sidewinder scope riding on top with the sports match mount. So just, just a test scope, just threw that on. What do I think of this rifle? I love the concept of it. I love the design of it. Um, I will get my hands on the FAC rated one and put some slugs through it and really sort of uh, give that a good uh, good test because I think that'll be more of a um, more of an in-depth review stroke test. This one I'll just show, give you like the normal nuts and bolts, uh, you know, uh, rack and load review as you do. But let's sort of I'll sort of throw out a few um, specs and features. So I'll, I'll, I'll sort of basically tell you the rifle's features. Okay, just referring to their manual. So. The good thing about this, and what I do particularly like, although I haven't got any other uh, barrels, but you can interchange all the barrels on it, which is really good. High capacity, easy loading magazine system. And this is an improvement. I'll sort of jump into improvements over the Mark I as well. Massive magazines. Okay, 28 shot magazine. Okay, this one's in 2-2. Picatinny scope rail um, and pick a Picatinny rails here and there, which is cool. Talk more about them in a little bit. Um, externally adjustable AMP regulator, which is sort of under there, so you can adjust the regulator. Dual power tuners, which I'll again, I'll show you them uh, in a little while. Um, dual big scale manometers. So you've got one there and you've got one there. They've improved them over the Mark I, which is nice. Built-in moderator carbon fiber bottle, uh, replaceable tactical style grip, or AR grip, I'd call it, and adjustable match trigger. Now, all them bits are really great, but what it boils down to is accuracy. Now, you guys that have tuned into this, you into this video, you probably watch all the other air gun um, videos and there's loads about the FX's, there's loads of sponsored shooters, well I shouldn't really say sponsored shooters but well we won't get into it but you, let's just say they're getting free stuff and they're probably getting a bit of a wage off FX for doing their videos. Not me, I'm just a pauper doing an unbiased layman's video. Okay, working man's video, I'll call it. We'll, we'll call it working man's review. Okay, now, um, the FX Dream Pub that I had uh, a while back, I did not find that thing particularly accurate, if I'm honest. And I've still got the targets here. FX Dream Pub, this is at 30 yards. Um, the, all right, these, these targets aren't great to sort of do what you can, but. They're not as good as these white ones that I've got. I didn't, this is my shooting as well, yeah, admittedly, but I, I'm a half decent shot, especially at 30 yards, and I have shot PCP air rifles that will literally, you know, just go through one hole, 
They'll just push pallets through one hole. Check the playlist if you don't believe me. But the FX Dream Pot, I just didn't find it amazingly accurate for, for the cost of it. I don't know, I was wanting to cloverleaf at the very least at 30 yards. Sub 12 foot pound, of course. And then we're jumping into accuracy. The Mark II Impact. What am I doing wrong, guys? Tell me what I'm doing right, wrong. I've got everything set up, you know, um, I've got everything set up how it should be. There was no wind, it was quite a sunny day. I was off um, a foam action sports um, rest. I, think I, was, right, I was just looking for one in here to show you. You'll see it in the footage. Nice and steady. I mean, this was even more ergonomically sound for me because the Dream Pop is a right-handed uh, rifle. This is really, boy, you can get away with it, left-handers. Still not amazing. JSP Diablo pallet, pellets, still got them here. Okay, so real good quality pellets. What's going on? I should be clo clover leafing at the very least. Um, yeah, that says it all. <laughs> this is 30 yards. What is going on? Everything's tight. Regulators are set correctly. The scope's good. I've had the scope a while and it's my test scope and it is good. Um, you know, I've not damaged the scope or anything. Don't know what's going on, guys. So maybe I've had a couple of lemon uh, rifles or they're just not all that as um, other YouTubers are making. Now, and what I can tell you, and I wish I had a scope cam because you would have seen this, I put a question mark on that pellet hole there, okay? Doing a group right here. And I actually seen that pellet literally just go and then drop downrange at 30 yards. I could actually see it. It just went totally, it, it just went in its own direction. It was bizarre. What is going on? Is it the smooth twist barrel or what? Or have I just got, have I just got a lemon gun I'm reviewing? I, I almost, before I started this video, I was like, uh, do I do this review or not? You know, I'm that sort of like, because people are going to be in the comments are going to be like, ah, oh, you're doing something wrong. Ah, oh, you've got something set up wrong. Ah, oh, you're a crap shot. Yeah, I know that. I'm not that bad a shot. So I don't, I really don't know what's going on. For a rifle that is high end, I'm not going to say the price because I don't like to give prices, but it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. This rifle is, um, I'd just expect a little bit better if I'm perfectly honest, accuracy wise. But maybe you guys can do way better. Well, you probably can. Maybe your guns are fine. Maybe I have got something set up wrong on this. Read the manual. I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit sort of all right with guns, you know. <laughs> I tend to know roughly what I'm doing by now. I uh, don't know. I just didn't find it that amazingly accurate i was expecting it for the price just to be a laser beam but don't know but anyway that is just how it went for me on the day that aside let's talk about let's talk about the rifle i mean it's not the accuracy isn't bad but i just expect it to be a lot better a lot better for what you for what you pay for it but Hey ho, hey ho. Right then, let's talk about this rifle in a bit more in depth, styly, rack and load uh, style as ever. So let's talk about the magazines then. So uh, I was on about these magazines on the, the, on the Dream Pop, um, the Dream Line Bull Pop. I found them a little bit of a pain, to be fair. Well, not a pain, there was just not fiddly, but you know, you, you basically move that um, thing there and you take the cover off and then you've got to twist it round. This bigger one is a lot easier 
and I found it really quite nice to load up because like you've got these finger, well I call them finger grooves, so you can just twizzle it around dead easy, drop your first pallet in and then just drop them all in. Dead easy to load. I was really, I am really warm into these magazines now, I really am. And a 28 shot, I know it's like the size of a, you know, dinner plate, um, but that is cool. I, and I do like these magazines and I didn't have any problems um, on this uh, particular rifle. The Dream Pop was tending to leave one or two in. It would sort of stop and not let you load it. Um, and it was, you know, it'd be, there'd be one or two left in the magazine rather than it, you know, using them all up. But, and this is what I'll tell you, I didn't get it on camera. I did manage to double feed it. And I actually, I think, well, I think I've got about three in the barrel, stuck in the barrel, and I had to rod the barrel out. So uh, it doesn't prevent you from, um, you know, filling the barrel up with pellets. First shot, well, it wasn't the first shot, but the first shot that got stuck, I was like, oh, that's weird. You know, I didn't really hear it. And then I tried again, and I was like, oh, maybe the magazine's not feeding. Took the magazine out, cocked it, fired it, um, I thought it, it cleared uh, and then I put the magazine in, done it again and every time I was pulling the um, cocking lever back you'd hear it sort of hiss. So it was like the the, um, the plenum sort of, uh, I'll, I'll explain what that is, just dumping its air. It was, it was all a bit weird. Anyway, I thought, hmm, I don't like the sound of that. I think something's stuck in the barrel and like I say, I rotted the barrel and three pellets dropped out of it. So... Whoops, so the magazine, the magazines do not um, prevent you from double, well, I'll say double feeding the rifle. So, I don't know, maybe that should be a feature on a high-end rifle like this that should really be incorporated. So, the 12 foot pound version, slightly different to like an FAC rated one, you look at the FAC rated ones, firearm certificate ones, or the over 12 foot pound ones. This thing here is like an air reservoir. You've, you've got your cylinder, carbon fiber. Basically the air goes into the regulator, which is here. And then you've got, it's called a plenum, okay? Which is another little cylinder. So that fills up with air. So basically air comes out of this, out of the cylinder, into the plenum. Okay, when the plenum's filled, it shuts that regulator. Okay, and then all that air there is what pushes the pe pellet that out the barrel. On the FAC versions, these are quite a little, quite a bit bigger. In a nutshell, it just makes the gun work a lot more efficient, and rather than um, the cylinder pushing a lot more air than what it needs to. With this plenum, it, it just makes everything a lot more efficient. You get more shots per fill and this, that and the other. So look in the details of the video for shot count and stuff like that um, because there's a lot of information on that on different calibers, different, um, different power settings, this, that and the other. So you have a manometer here for obviously your tank and there's a manometer here of the same um, size and description of that one uh, underneath for your um, plenum okay you've also have you also have power setting here as well so you can adjust the power down i do love that that is a great option uh, you get that on most fx's but i do like that if you're hunting you know and suddenly you you wind up in a barn or something and you know you don't want to ricochet or anything like that you can crank the power down a little bit you know just scenarios like that just you know it's it's quite quite a, a good feature to have so i like it i do like i do like the impacts i really do like i said it just i don't know what's gone on with the uh the accuracy of this thing it's, it's really weird it's really weird Thanks very much to uh, Livens Gun Shop for the lone rifle, uh, but I will be having a word with them, so, you know, um, just see if they can accuracy test it and make sure that the rifle is all right. 
Uh, yeah, I know what will happen. They'll get it absolutely. It'll be laser beam and they'll be like, uh, no, right, it's just you. Sorry, mate. That's what will happen. Right, let's have a close look then. So, I've sort of touched on a little bit. So anyway, um, they're in a great deal different um, to the Mark 1. Um, here's your recoil pad, okay. You've got a bit of adjustment here, so you can sort of move that up and down. I won't, I won't undo that, but you can move it up and down, which is nice. A uh, bit of a right-handed um, cheek piece there. Again, it is a bit of a righty because, let's just open that a minute. We'll cock it. It is a bit of a right-handed gun, and I'll just put the magazine in. I was shooting it left-handed, but it weren't too bad. So, it is a ball pop. I mean, you know, uh, magazine and all the action is here. So, yeah, it is classed as a ball pop. Look at that magazine, it is huge. How big they're gonna go? I mean, give it another year, it'll be like having a Frisbee stuck out the side of your rifle. Um, I do like how the magazines load. They're a lot more positive and you've got a little lever here to sort of um, press. I'm trying to do this one-handed and it's not working. A little lever here that you press and then the magazines just drop out, which is cool. There's your uh, little manometer under there, like I said. Everything seems nice and chunky and robust. There's your power setting along the action there. And that's your the other side of your cocking handle there. AR-15 style handle there so you can swap that out to well any ar-15 uh, type uh, pistol grip if you wanted to so that's cool you know depends what floats your boat um ar-15 style safety only on the one side so but that's not a problem because obviously on this side you've got your power settings um so but yeah the the safety is really nice nice and positive you know not a problem with that adjustable trigger which is very nice so you've got your adjust adjustment uh, grub screws there you can see you can adjust the blade as well really really nice and another improvement uh, the mark one didn't have it but you've actually got a decent dust cover for your filling uh, thingy there so you can just push that on that's cool just really nice um interchangeable barrels like i said interchangeable calibers shrouded barrel so you can the barrel obviously is that long well it's to about there so you've got nice long barrel smooth twist x system on it i think that's what they're calling it smooth twist yeah smooth twist x yeah, um, supposed to be really, really accurate, but I'm struggling at the minute. Sorry, guys. Sorry, FX, but I'm struggling. Shrouded barrel, as you can see there. So there's there's like the shroud, and then you've got um, this. Oh, I'm, I'm adjusting the. Uh, I can't really undo that with that. Well, one-handed anyway. But you've got a. Oh, squeak 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 you've got like a silencer there i mean it is like an integral um baffle integrally uh, silenced should i say a shrouded barrel so and i tell you what it is damn quiet it really is damn quiet um would you fit any anything else on that no not really you just wouldn't do it would you um so yeah, just a, it's a real nice rifle. Um, I love the feel of it. I love the ergonomics of it. Yeah, this scope is probably be a little bit big for what it is with that sunshade on it. To be fair, I did need the sunshade on it because <laughs> amazingly the sun was out. The trigger, um, I've mentioned the trigger, the uh, trigger guard is, as you can see, it's all sort of incorporated into the action really really nice just just a lovely lovely rifle the um cocking lever is this is the same as pretty much all the blooming fx's at the minute you know they've, they've stuck with that it's ergonomic it uh, it does the job and it's pretty solid as well 
no sort of nasty rattles or anything like that. While we've got it cocked, you know what I'm going to say, guys. Let's give it a trigger pull. See what it's doing. It can be cranked right down. Right down. Um, like I say, all the techie uh, details I'll throw in, uh, in the uh, details of the video. Or if you really want to see all the, uh, all the real techie stuff, just jump on FX's website. But uh, let's just give this uh, let's give this trigger a pull. Oh, I've got it on safe. Hang on a minute. Oh, what are you doing, right? What are you doing? Failing as ever. Oh, that's it. That just went then. Two pounds. Just over two pounds. Just a. Oh. That's a real nice trigger. Real nice trigger. You can hear how silent that thing is. That thing is silent. Silent. Yeah, so it's... I don't know. It's. I'm not... I love the rifle. I'm just not psyched with this... with the review of it because... Accuracy really excites me with the PCPs because out of all the guns I shoot, PCPs are usually the most accurate, more accurate than rim fires, in my experience. Um, more accurate than center fires uh, a lot of the time. Um, I don't know, and it's just not really amazingly excited me. And... I don't know, it's, it's disheartened me a little bit. I was Usually I'm raring to go with a review and it's, I don't know, I'm just like, ugh, and I'm watching all these other reviews, you know, and they're, they're like laser beam accuracy and I'm like, it's either total BS or I'm doing something totally wrong. So, but I'm just telling you guys how it is. I, you know, I could have easily have just, made a target up and edited the footage to make it look absolutely, you know, laser beam accurate. But it didn't happen with me. So, sorry about that. Would I have been impressed if I had put down, um, well, however much these are, well, I don't like saying prices. They're a lot of money. They're a lot of, they're well over a thousand pound, aren't they? I think they're around 1500, probably plus here in the UK. Would I be happy if I'd just put that down on one of these with that accuracy? No, I would not. I would not. But hopefully, hope, I say hopefully, it's possibly that I've been doing something wrong, but I just cannot for the life of me tell what I've been doing wrong. So, um, I was, I, to be fair, usually I empty a rifle full of air when I'm testing it. This has still got, what, it's still got just under 200 bar in. I was just getting fed up with it. I was like, I just whatever I do, I just cannot cannot get this thing accurate. I did try other pellets as well. It was just the same, if not worse. And it, it turned out that JSBs were the best ones out of a out of well, let's say the bad bunch that I was using. And but they're still just not not great. So it's oh, I don't know. I don't know. It just disheartened me. It really did. For such a stunning, stunning rifle. I don't know what's going on. Hopefully I've made a mistake. If I have, I will annotate it right across the uh, this video and say, guys, guys, hold my hands up. I've got something set wrong. You know, um, hopefully that's the case. But what I will do, I will get a hold of an FAC rated one in a different caliber and, you know, we'll... We'll give that a whirl, see how see how that goes. But yeah, um, I don't know, I don't know. It's one of them. Anyway, we'll talk about the manual now. This is the if you've watched the Dream Pop uh, video, same manual really. All I'm going to say is FX do a cracking job on their manuals, all in English. Uh, lovely photographs, um, really clear. Excellent job. I think I scored it like nine out of ten on their uh, on their manuals. All they needed was exploded diagrams. So, but uh, 
But yeah, apart from that, great manual. Right guys, I'm gonna leave it at that. You can tell that I'm not super stoked doing this video, can't you? I don't know, it's just, I don't know, I'm just a little bit disheartened. I don't know, I was, I was expecting, I was expecting, I don't know. I was expecting to be really excited by this thing and I just, I'm just, I'm not. Sorry, I'll just tell you how it is. That's how I've been rolling for nearly 10 years on this channel, guys. Thanks for watching. That is Rack and Load. See ya.